Hi everyone and welcome back. Um, this is where I read the Bible out loud. I'm starting today in uh, Genesis 7 and I'll be closing in Genesis 8. Uh, yesterday, if you were with me, um, we went over uh, 5 and 6, which were about Noah and the, the message to build the ark from God. And so before we start, I'd like to open in prayer. Dear Father, thank you for being here and waking us up and giving us another day. Thank you for your word. Thank you that we can believe it is true. I'm praying for the listener right now who may have just stopped here wondering what this is all about, but I pray that they hear your voice and not my own. May they be blessed by your message no matter what chapter or verse I read. May they hear a message from the one true living God. Father God, steady our minds and our hearts. May we be open to receive your word, to understand it, and then know when it is time that we can share it. I pray that your word plants seeds and that your kingdom grow daily. Thank you, Father. It is in your, night, your name we pray. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> so we're going to go ahead and start in Genesis 7. The Great Flood. Then the Lord said to Noah, Come into the ark, you and all your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. You shall take with you seven each of every clean animal, a male and his female, two each of animals that are unclean, a male and his female. Also, seven each of birds of the air, male and female, to keep the species alive on the face of all the earth. For after seven more days, I will cause it to rain on the earth. 40 days and 40 nights, and I will destroy from the face of the earth all living things I have made. And Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded him. Noah was 600 years old when the flood waters were on the earth. So Noah with his sons, his wife, and his sons' wives went into the ark because of the waters of the flood. Of clean animals, of animals that are unclean, of birds, and of everything that creeps on the earth. Two by two, they went into the ark to Noah, male and female, as God had commanded Noah. And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were on the earth. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, on the day that all the fountains of the great deep were broken up and the windows of heaven were open and the rain was on the earth, 40 days and 40 nights. That's an incredible vision. It, in a lot of detail. So we were full of water. I don't even know. I'm, I'm trying to figure out, was there even one inch of gap between heaven and, and earth? I, who knows, you know, from the sound of it, it doesn't sound like it. So I'm, I'm imagining a ball full of water, like a globe. <laughs> Verse 13. On the very same day, Noah and Noah's sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons, with them entered the ark they and every beast after its kind all cattle after their kind and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth after its kind <clears throat> and every bird after its kind every bird of every sort and they went into the ark to noah two by two of all flesh in which is the breath of life so those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God has commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. So the Lord closed the ark after the family of Noah and Noah entered in. Now the flood was on the earth forty days. The waters increased and lifted up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters prevailed and greatly increased on the earth, and the ark moved about on the surface of the waters, and the waters prevailed exceedingly on heaven. I'm so sorry, let me repeat verse 19. And the waters prevailed exceedingly on the earth and all the high hills under the whole heaven were covered. The waters prevailed 15 cubits upward and the mountains were covered and all flesh died that moved on the earth, birds and cattle and beasts and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth and every man in all in whose nostrils was the breath of the spirit of life. All that was in the dry land died. So he destroyed all living things which were on the face of the ground, both man and cattle, creeping thing, and bird of the air. They were destroyed from the earth. Only Noah and those who were with him in the ark remained alive, and the waters prevailed on the earth 150 days. So anything that was 
had any life, any micro, you know, the small little species that you can't even imagine exist or are something, they even um, were no longer in existence. So God is in this, I'm imagining God is truly just washing the earth of everything that was displeasing except Noah and his family. Noah's Deliverance, chapter 8. Then God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the animals that were with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth, and the water subsided. The fountains of the deep and the windows of heaven were also stopped, and the rain from heaven was restrained, and the waters receded continually from the earth. At the end of the hundred and fifty days, the waters decreased. Then the ark rested in the seventh month, the seventeenth day, of the month on the mountains of Ararat, and the waters decreased continually until the tenth month. In the tenth month, on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains were seen. So it came to pass at the end of the forty days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. Then he sent out a raven, which kept going to and fro until the waters had dried up from the earth. He also sent out from himself a dove to see if the waters had receded from the face of the ground. So there was the raven that went out first to see if they could find land. And then there was a dove he sent out after. So they would have to fly until they found an appropriate dry place to rest. But the dove found no resting place for the sole of her foot. And she rested, she resting place for the sole of her foot. And she returned into the ark to him. Sorry for that. For the waters were turned into the ark to him. For the waters, we're going to start that all over. So we're going to start at nine. Please forgive me. <clears throat> but the dove found no resting place for the sole of her foot. And she returned into the ark to him. For the waters were on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand and took her and drew her into the ark to himself. And he waited yet another seven days. And again, he sent the dove out from the ark. Then the dove came to him in the evening, and behold, a freshly plucked olive leaf was in her mouth, and no one knew that the waters had receded from her. Isn't that good? So he, anyway, that was a sign that uh, there was vegetation and there was enough dry land. So he waited yet another seven days and sent out. <clears throat> so let me start over. This one isn't going smoothly, so it's an important message. So thank you for toughing it out with my uh, non-flowing self. So we're going to pick up at Verse 10, and he waited yet another seven days, and again he sent the dove out from the ark. Then the dove came to him in the evening, and behold, a freshly plucked olive leaf was in her mouth. And no one knew that the waters had receded from the earth. So he waited yet another seven days, and sent out the dove, which did not return again to him any more. And it came to pass in the six hundred and first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, that the waters were dried up from the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and indeed the surface of the ground was dry. And in the second month, on the 27th day of the month, the earth was dry. So the dove didn't come back because it found land to, to, uh, to go ahead and rest her little feet and stay. And so that's why Noah uncovered the ark. Isn't that amazing? Verse 15, Then God spoke to Noah, saying, Go out of the ark, you and your wife, and your sons and your sons' wives, with you. Bring with you every living thing of all flesh that is with you, birds and cattle, and every creeping thing that creeps on earth, so that they may abound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out, and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him. Every animal, every creeping thing, every bird, and whatever creeps on the earth, according to their families, went out of the ark. Now, God's covenant with creation. This is verse 20. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal and of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a so soothing aroma. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake. Although the imagination of man's heart is evil from its youth, nor will I again destroy every living thing as I have done. That's really important. I'm going to say that one more time. And not for you, for me. I just want to reiterate it to myself. The Lord says, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake. Although the imagination of a man's heart is evil from his youth, 
<clears throat> nor will I again destroy every living thing as I have done. I'm going to say why that's important to me. So our mind will wander and do a lot of things. And that's why it's important to not judge a person for its thought. But it's important to, to capture that thought and to dis dissect it to what you think it means. And just because you've thought of something ugly, it isn't going to take... Um, a, it's not going to get a hold of your life and completely turn you another way until there's action behind it. It's okay because of everything that's out there. We're saturated with media. We're saturated with, with gossips. We're, there's all kinds of things that are negative, right? And so they make you think things once that seed is planted. You might have, have never been in a place that I have been, but if I started telling the story and I let your imagination run away with you with things I keep giving you details about, there's no telling where your mind will go. And so you might feel a certain way about yourself, like dirty or unclean or evil, but you're truly not until that turns into an action. So that's why I needed a pause there. And it gives me hope because I have been places that I don't like where my mind takes me sometimes, but I can have faith that God knows my heart and my mind and he's judging accordingly. Um, and an imagination from youth is going to grow and go places we don't know, right? That's why it's an imagination. So, verse 22. While the earth remains seed time and harvest cold and heat, winter and summer and day and night shall not cease. I think that's a good closing for today. I pray that you are well and that you have a good, blessed day. And take care. Bye.